Hello again, everyone. Mark Hackle, Macomb County Executive, Deputy John Paul Rea. I tell you, it's interesting. I mean, you've come a long way and uh, interesting to see some of the dynamics that are happening. You know, I know there's a challenge with people wanting to really know, okay, what are we supposed to do? Can we wear masks, not wear masks, the whole vaccine thing? Let's just uh, say, or suffice it to say, if you need a vaccine, it's available. Plenty of opportunity to get vaccinated anywhere. Again, it's not required by law. So with that being said, uh, you know, we shouldn't be challenging one another as to whether you have or haven't, um, and even the mask thing. Uh, there's been some challenges even at the state level as to who can or can't wear a mask pretty much everywhere you go. If people choose to wear a mask, they're wearing a mask. But I think we're at a point now where it's no longer necessary to fight about it. Uh, you know, be concerned. Make sure you take care of you and your family and uh, consult with your doctor. Uh, we're getting through a lot of that right now, and I'm just glad uh, to see that, you know, people are kind of getting around. In fact, you know, I, I, I kind of miss it, JP. I, I miss it, man. <laughs> we're there. Okay? It's good to be we back. Hugged it out, right? It's good to be back. We kind of hugged it out a little yeah. bit. So that being said, it's been a unique challenge. And again, uh, you know, unfortunately, there have been some challenges people have had to deal with personally, mm -hmm. uh, you know, with their family members or people they know. Uh, it's been sad. It's been difficult. But I think uh, a lot of people weighing in on it, uh, we're, we've gotten a lot further, and yet we know there's still challenges to come yep. and uh, still, you know, trying to understand some of the regulations. But health department, great job, yeah. emergency management, and I think, what is it, July 1st? July 1st, all restrictions will be lifted as a state it's order. It's pretty much over, and nobody can answer the question as to why, you know, what really created that. Um, you know, it's not really the data, the science, because uh, it's still out there, it's still amongst us. But apparently, July 1st, it's over mm -hmm. no more orders mm -hmm. in effect or anything so kind of weird you can tell yeah. people are just kind of like uneasy not sure what to do right now mark throughout this entire pandemic we've really focused on the whole notion of assessing the situations that we're in and triaging any of the challenges that are before us or lifting up the opportunities that can assist the people around the county again the clearinghouse for all that information has been macomgov.org we'll continue to provide that information up there and as you said the tools and resources are at our disposal to combat this virus and put people in situations where they feel most comfortable we have so many great things going for us whether it's our health department whether whether it's our community service partners, whether it's the individuals that are helping the businesses and the planning and economic development side, whether it's all the community partners that we have there around the community, whether it's the great programs that are coming out of the educational side. We have so many areas in which we are not only hitting our stride, getting back to whatever normal is going to be as people continuing to chime in on that, but I think most importantly, approach it with civility, approach it with dig dignity, and approach it with respect. Yeah, no more, let's not argue about this yeah. again. If it's a matter of choice, whether or not you're vaccinated, uh, allow people the opportunity to make that choice. Uh, if they make it a law, that's a whole different, uh, I guess, arena, but it's not. Mm -hmm. So with that, you know, the question then becomes, you know, are they going to force people to give up their information, medical information, uh, to go into a business, to go to an event, to go to a function? Uh, that's going to be a huge challenge. Mm -hmm. And again, if it's not required by law, difficult for people to go ahead and say, well, but we're still going to require you to give up your medical information. Yet, I believe there's some places or people that are going to be doing that. So again, it's going to be a unique challenge, but moving forward, I think there are lessons learned from this pandemic. I think, uh, you know, any organization, whether the business, uh, uh, your, your own personal life, some of the things you've had to deal with, uh, some of the decisions made on behalf of the government, yeah. you know, from the federal to the state to the local. Uh, there have been a lot of, I guess, uh, lessons learned and, uh, you know, uh, it's a challenge, but for the most part, we know moving forward, uh, there's plenty of other things to do, you know, whether it's dealing with roads, economic development, you know, working with uh, employees within our organization, and in particular, dealing with the funding that's going to be coming our way that could be somewhat transformative. Uh, we're going to have a lot of funding is coming from a lot of different pools Absolutely, of money yeah. to deal with Macomb Community Action, resources, veterans, seniors, um, you know, uh, housing opportunities. Uh, there's a lot of money that's going to be out there that's coming in different pockets. We know one of them, uh, the transformative one we're looking at, deals with this, uh, you know, American Recovery Plan. And with that, uh, they want it to be kind of money that's utilized for transformative projects or programs. And here in Macomb County, we've got an idea how to use that specific funding and we're going to be working with the Board of Commissioners. We've already worked with our countywides to kind of get an idea of what real transformative projects can we work on that really can have an impact in the community that couldn't go a long way, not only you know with the, the today's dollars, but into the future mm -hmm. with these transformative projects. And I'm excited about where we might be headed here in Macomb County uh, if we get that support of the board to do that. Mark, it's really interesting to see the creativity that the team has brought to the table as we looked at the first pool of resources we got with the CARES Act allocation. You know that 151 million dollars where we looked at the ability to get PPE, to pay for tests, to you know provide you know small business support, to get direct assistance to residents, to look at food security, all those things. You 
you know, we looked at those tangible pur purchases that happened very, very quickly to respond to the pandemic. Now what we're looking at with the ARP dollars is the whole notion of how we take nearly $170 million and ensure it has a lasting impact in the future to ensure that the county is in the best position to respond to emerging issues on community development, public health, the way that we view prosperity around our community. And as you said, Mark, bring in all those other different funding sources because there's always going to be a need in the community. But we know what these resources is that if that we make that initial investment, if we put in those enterprising dollars, we can start the conversation, bring those partners to the table, ensure that we make all the appropriate selfs and have all the financial safeguards in there because we want to be stewards of the public truck. We want to make sure this money has a lasting impact, but most importantly, we want to leave a lasting change on the community. Yeah, let's not forget the CARES funding that first came in. There were only, if you will, four counties in the, in the city of Detroit that benefited from that. You know, it was uh, Kent, Wayne, Oakland, Macomb, and the city of Detroit yeah. that got that funding. This time around, that's not the case. Pretty much every township, every municipality is getting some of that funding from the state to deal with. And we're talking in the millions of dollars, or I should say from the federal government. But with that being said, um, you know, there's, uh, there's the other side of this. You know, people are saying, are you kidding me? Where's all this money coming yeah. from? Who's paying that into the future? And a uh, valid question. You know, because there is a lot of money coming from the federal government for these projects. So our thought is, okay, we're not going to be wasteful. You know, it's not a situation where we're sitting at the top of the county building making it rain. we got to figure out if we're going to be doing something, let's do something that truly is transformative. And again, I go back to main projects, you know, not only underground sewer issues to try to make sure that, you know, uh, we're not, uh, we're, we're doing something finally to keep our water fresh or clean here at Lake St. Clair and in Macomb County. Working with Candace Miller, she's got some ideas on that. Yeah. Talking to Tony Wickersham, the sheriff, boy, it's been an issue of mine over the years. The central intake and assessment of prisoners that come in here, mental health, substance abuse, what are, what are the medical issues of these people, homeless concerns that are coming in, so we could truly take care of and look at a person when they come in those doors, not as just a prisoner and let's warehouse them inside of a facility, and uh, the family that's up behind. How do we address these issues with that first contact you have with law enforcement because a lot of times it is a concern that's underlying that created the problem with them coming in contact with law enforcement. And there's a lot we can do with that here in Macomb County and not have to raise taxes or raise the millage because we've got the money coming to us from the federal government to support and solve this problem. And the other one is the Health and Human Services side dealing with our health department. Yeah. I mean, an opportunity to create, if you will, uh, a, a good opportunity for people working together you know, within, you know, the, the mental health, the, the substance abuse, working with our senior department, working with veterans housing, making sure Macomb Community Action, all these people together can work uh, on an individual basis with somebody to say, hey, we know how to take care of this problem with this individual. We can create something here in Macomb County, kind of similar to what we did with here with yeah. Comtech. I mean, this is incredible. Nowhere else in North America they have a facility like we have here in Macomb County that was truly transformative. And the data, the information that comes into this so we understand about driving habits of people and to try to figure out how do we keep it safer out on the road is something that came out of this that we didn't intend to begin with. Mark, the outcomes that we never thought that we could get from a facility like this because it's founded in the understanding or expertise that you had in public safety. What happens if we have the central hub for dispatch? But then you bring in traffic operations, then you bring intelligent transportation systems, then you bring in the ability for us to respond to all these things. It just grows, it expands, and it provides a better service to the public. But it's one of those things where on the front end it's always like, how are you going to pay for something like this? Right. That's what these ARP dollars can be used. They can get us over that initial hurdle of how we're going to pay for this to then make those amazing changes for how we provide better service to the 880,000 individuals that live across this county. And we're going to be able to draw down for other grants and other resources Absolutely. that are out there to help support this as well. So I mean it's pretty interesting in talking to you know various organizations that are out there and nonprofit agencies and the conversation we just got through uh, having with Dr. Hudson. Yeah, the United um, you know, Way. The United Way. You know, just had a conversation with her about how they can support you know and, and, and help us with these particular issues if we do something truly transformative. I want to lead that here in Macomb County. I mean, we tend to look at this visionary opportunity that we have. It's trying to get that message across to, you know, others. And in particular, we're going to be working with next week, the Board of Commissioners, to try to get them to understand what we think could truly be transformative for everyone in mm -hmm. Macomb County. This has an opportunity to really help everyone in Macomb County keep the taxes low, but also not uh, unnecessarily see a revolving door when it comes to dealing with people that are in need of support from Macomb Community Action, or revolving door for people that are coming in contact with law enforcement. There is something truly uh, transformed we could do and lead the entire country where folks are saying, how did they do that? How did they get that right in Macomb County? And uh, we know we have the opportunity to do so, and we do not want to be wasteful with people's money, especially this $170 million that's coming our way yeah. shortly.
Mark, I think another thing is the whole notion and way, as you highlighted, is we're packaging and communicating. Obviously, these video outlets have been a tremendous outlet that we're going to continue to leverage, not only to highlight the projects and initiatives that you view as a priority, but to highlight a lot of those partners that are doing the work. Again, MacombGov.org, we've moved some things around, made it a lot more easier for you to integrate in the programs, get the resources that you need, and stay in continuous contact with the county as that trusted voice and advocate throughout this process and now heading into the future. Yeah, and on top of that, we know more money is coming our way as well when it comes to dealing with uh, infrastructure needs. So there is going to be money coming for roads and bridges separate from this funding that we just got. Some are saying, well, take the 170 million, put it right in the roads. You can't. I mean, there are parameters yeah. within each one of these, you know, I guess, uh, you know, money that does come from the federal government. And we're locking in on all that, making sure that everything we do is consistent with whatever the guidelines are that come forth. So again, our, health, our, our finance department working alongside of uh, those uh, that do the auditing for the county mm -hmm. are going to keep us out of harm's way and any money that we spend here and obviously the continuous relationship we have with the Board of Commissioners. So, you know, with that, uh, we just wanted to give you a quick update. We know it's summertime. There's exciting things happening. We've got a lot going on with our trails in Macomb County, um, obviously the waterway, the Clinton River. Well, I'll tell you what, those liveries are, are doing, a, they did a heck of a job last year. There's more to come as far as opportunities yeah. out on our Clinton River, the mainstream main street here in Macomb County, and uh, even our metro parks. Absolutely. Some great things happening. And, a couple of good announcements that are coming that I can't quite talk about. That was a terrible tease, I guess, if you will. Um, exciting things at the Metro Parks. Um, I'll let the parks deal with that when the time comes and those that are kind of uh, partnering with them. But for the most part, get out and enjoy the summer. I mean, there's tremendous opportunities. And uh, as I always say, you know, uh, the pandemic is, you know, pretty much coming to a close July 1st. I mean, that's uh, pretty much everything is no longer you know pandemic related uh, or covid related so let's not uh, let's not get into the fight as to whether somebody's wearing a mask or not please if you feel uncomfortable uh, get vaccinated if you haven't if your doctor suggests that you do and uh, don't argue with one another over the masks thing and who should or who shouldn't get mm -hmm. vaccinated because it is a choice it is not required by law and uh, you know with that on behalf of jp myself and the rest of us here in macomb county please enjoy the summer that is coming up and uh, want to remind everyone to still continue to keep you and your family safe.